Give me a second. If you're wondering what that sound was, it was the sound of me birthing a brand new spooky story. This one's called Season Finale. <laughs> Jenny props her feet up on the coffee table and sinks deep into the couch. The television roars with nonsense spewed from commercials. Jenny isn't watching it. Instead, she's transfixed on her phone. Next up is the season finale of Signs of the Times, the show that New Yorkers call hip, extremely funny, and one of the decade's best. Jenny didn't watch the show but she knew that those at work loved it. They'd annoy her if she didn't watch the season finale. In fact, she'd probably be one of the only people in the country that wasn't watching. (laughs) Honey, I'm home. Oh, that's such a cliche thing to say. Glitchy. I thought it was pronounced cliché. <laughs> you would, dear. Where's Tommy? If he's hanging out with those punk kids again, I might have to take away his video games. No, not the video games. Why are you hiding under the table like that, sweetie? I wasn't hidden. I was protecting myself from the sun. I am confused. I thought that's why you've got a roof over your head. (laughs) No, kids always play floor is lava, but I want to start playing ceiling is sun. But, you know, like burning hot sun that could melt your face off. Um, dark much? The family gathers around the dining table as Honey serves their last dish. This smells great, Honey. Smells incredible. Oh, it's just the same thing we had last week. No biggie. Jenny never liked the actress on this show. She always seemed so robotic and fake. Luckily, she's still effectively tuning the show out with her head buried in her phone. How was your day, honey? Oh, you know, it's work. Tell us everything that happened. Well, it started normally. We finally got some new parts to fix that filing cabinet that was broken. I told you about that the other day, though. Um, um, anything else? Oh, are we going to do that now? Yes. If possible, the actor's demeanor became even more wooden. The man collects himself, breathes in a deep sigh. Breaking the fourth wall, his gaze adjusts toward the camera. While many have come to the last episode of the season to see a cliffhanger, a will-they-won't-they scenario, we are instead offering a final... A final to end all finals. This human cesspool we call Earth needs to be updated. Jenny only just realized what she was hearing. She notices the main character is staring deep into her soul. Chills shoot down her spine. We, as a race, unlike humans, need to feed upon your flesh, and we cannot wait a second longer. Without warning, the feed switches over to a commercial. Hi, this is Rick. Rick, Rick, Rick Moneybags. I'm here with Wheels, 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 where you can buy top dollar wheels and tires for deals that will cause the earth to explode into a billion pieces. Wait, did I say billion? I meant to say trillion. 
The commercial abruptly ends and Jenny is greeted with a man staring at her again. We're back. Okay, good. Because if you go to commercial one more time, I will have to end you over there in that booth. Well, sooner than everyone else, that is. Jenny realizes that she needs to shut off the television, so she makes an effort to grab the remote. But when her hand slumps to the couch, she realizes she's paralyzed. She goes to scream, but she realizes her mouth is immovable. Glued shut, only squeaks of air make it past her clenched teeth. Sorry for the interruption, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> we are here to present you with the option of going quietly. Well, we're not presenting you with the option. We're choosing it for you. For years, our team has found a way to communicate with far-off lands. A huge leap for science, our communication has blossomed into an understanding. In about a day, this world of yours will be covered in fire and blood. To those watching this program, which by our count is around 12 million, we are allowing you to take a moment to relax and end your existence in a much less painful manner. While our broadcast has been able to seduce your minds into suppression, we still need to commit our blessing. The woman on the TV show then approaches the man. My lovely co-star will join us. The lady then hands the man a knife. Thank you. The man shows the knife to the camera, as if selling it on an infomercial. My co-star has just handed me a ceremonial dagger that I will now plunge into her heart. The actress smiles at the camera and then steps a few paces away from the man. She then turns to the man and he throws the knife at her. It finds its place right in her chest. The audience is terrified. Oozing from the woman's chest is a liquid that's an unnatural purple hue. A crew member from off screen enters the frame and tries to stop the madness. The man on stage looks at him and the crew member just stops. He drops to his knees, a strange sound starts to emit from him, and suddenly, the crewman explodes. And for the rest of the crew and audience here... Good. Now that the majority of our crew and cast have been, for lack of a better term, obliterated, it is time now for you, the home audience, to explore the inner depths of your mind and purge your soul from within. While this certainly only covers 12 million watching this right now, fear not, as many other shows have been sharing this triumphant news across multiple channels, countries, and live streams. Baked into this curse is a side effect to anyone who sees your mangled corpses. So, when the paramedics come rushing to the house to save the fallen victims, they will gaze upon the puddle of flesh and find that their limbs no longer work, and as they convulse and try to break free from paralysis, they will feel their innards being clawed out. And for those remaining few people out there left unscathed, they'll just be exposed to the fire and the chaos that comes toward the end of it all. It's a real lose-lose for you all. The man reaches into his pocket, but looks surprised to find something in there. Oh, I almost forgot. He pulls out a small device from his pocket that looks to be made of glass of wire, rudimentary to modern devices. When we started this project, the hard part was not just getting 12 million viewers to watch a single live event on something that wasn't a streaming service, but it was also tough to keep this all a secret until we were ready. In the event that we needed more time and needed to reset this whole thing, a push up a button here would cause a glitch in time. The world would revert right up to the point I started going off script, and no one would be the wiser. It's a neat effect when it activates, but it's a shame we'll never get to use it. The man crushes the device in his hand. The glass shatters. There is no use for it now. We've gone too far. 
there's no hero to save the day. The only heroes here are the saviors that are coming to destroy this world. You at home sitting there stuck in your chair, you think if you can just get out of that chair, you'd break free and save the world. I'm sorry to say, it's not going to happen. The second you started watching this show was the beginning of your end. The man looks at his watch. Oh gosh, look at the time. It is now time for your host to say good night. So, good night. He snaps his fingers and... The man pops like a water balloon filled with vicious crimson liquid. The camera holds on an empty set for a few minutes until it turns into static. All the while, Jenny still sits on the couch. That is, what remains of her. Reminds me of the series finale of Friends, when Joey was cooking some Hot Pockets and accidentally left the gas oven on, and then Monica turned on the light, which ignited the gas that filled up the apartment, exploding and obliterating all of the Friends instantaneously. Uh, if you don't remember that ending, it's possible I just made that up because that's what I was hoping would happen. Anywho... The next story is called Cabin Creepers. <laughs> testing, testing. July 11th, 2020. So I just arrived at the cabin. Um, it's about 7.30 p.m. I only just got here and was unloading my things when I noticed something strange in the cabin. I was about to unload my things onto the bed in the main bedroom when I noticed little dots scattered on the surface of the blanket on the edge of the bed along the wall. I looked a little closer and saw that there were little granules that looked like dirt or wood pieces. But I looked even closer and saw that there were bug parts scattered within the granules. Bug legs, heads, torsos, etc. The whole edge of the bed was lined with these pieces, and it got even worse towards the corner of the bed leading to the corner of the room. In addition to the bits and pieces on the bed, I saw tiny dots on the floor next to the bed. I inspected the dots further and noticed a bunch of tiny winged insects on the ground, also dead. I know from previous visits that the cabins had termite issues before, as well as some ant issues, but I never seen anything like this. It's only been a few months since I visited here, and there was nothing like this during my previous visit. I can see there's some ants still that are alive and crawling in a trail on the windowsill, and disappearing into the dark corner of the room. Luckily there's not too many of them. There was an exterminator that helped with the cabin's termite problem a couple of years ago. I think I'll give them a call tomorrow to see if they can figure out what the heck happened here. Needless to say, I'll have to sleep on the couch tonight in the living room. Luckily, it looks like none of the bug bits are anywhere else outside of the bedroom. Oh, one other thing. Um, the neighbors have been blasting this awful music since I've been here. Can you hear that? Hopefully they turn it down soon so I can get some sleep. So, it's now Sunday, the day after I arrived. I had a terrible night's sleep last night since the neighbors continued to blast their stereo all throughout the night. I'll have to have a word with them later. Good news is, it doesn't seem like much else is wrong with the cabin for me to fix, just this bug issue. I think I'm gonna have to go grab some groceries though, since I might have to stay here a bit longer than expected. I called the exterminator, but he didn't pick up, so I'll have to call him again later. So I called the exterminator a couple more times, and finally he picked up. He said he's too booked with appointments to come by, but he told me to email him some pictures of the mess to determine what's going on. So I just sent him some pics. Well, see what he says. Meanwhile, the people next door have continued to blast their music. 
Earlier I ran into one of the tenants, a young man, and asked him to politely turn the music down. He apologized and said he'd do that right away. However, as you can probably still hear, it seems like they barely turned down the music since our chat, if at all. If you're gonna blast some music, at least play something good. Very frustrating. We'll have to talk to them again if it doesn't quiet down soon, or maybe just call the police. I forgot to mention, uh, I was walking around outside the cabin and noticed a ton of ant trails in various places, nearly surrounding the whole cabin. I guess I should be thankful there aren't many ants inside the cabin at the moment. So I got a message back from the exterminator. From the pictures I sent, he said the granules look like frass. That is, insect droppings. The dead insects with wings on the floor are reproductive ants. I didn't even know ants could have wings. He's still not sure what happened while the cabin was vacant or why there's so many bug appendages on the bed. Very strange. In all the years I've been checking up on this cabin, I've never seen any issues like this. In the meantime, I set up some ant traps for the ants that are crawling on the windowsill to try to get rid of those suckers. <sighs> Pretty tired. I think I'm gonna go get some sleep. It's the middle of the night. I woke up suddenly and I can't seem to fall asleep. Surprisingly, the music next door is no longer playing when I woke up. However, now another noise is distracting me and keeping me up. It's a very quiet, subtle noise coming from the bedroom. I hate to admit I get easily spooked at night, so I haven't gotten up to investigate the sound. It might just be in my head, but I swear I hear a very faint sound of tiny insects crawling. I'm starting to wonder if the sound was always there, and it was just masked by the music that was blasting constantly. Then again, I might just be imagining things. I'll have to check it out in the morning. Is this recording? Holy fucking shit. Shit, shit, shit! First of all, it's the next day right now and I'm driving to the nearest police station. Let me explain what happened. Last night I continued to have a terrible night's sleep and was barely able to fall asleep, but eventually managed to do so. I woke up very early in the morning, maybe six-ish, and realized that the sound, that awful crawling sound that I explained during the last recording, was definitely not a figment of my imagination. By the time I woke up, the sound had gone much louder. I walked over towards the bedroom as the sound continued to get louder and louder. That awful crawly insect sound. I could feel the hair standing up on the back of my neck as I approached the wall that was shared with the living room and the bedroom. The wall that seemed to be emitting the awful crawling sound. I was about a couple of feet away from the wall when I stopped. It seemed like I could hear millions of bugs crawling inside the wall. I thought about putting my head closer to the wall to listen closer, but before I could do so, I heard a loud cracking sound, like that of wood splitting. So I jumped back, and not a moment too soon, as the wall began to crack in different places all at once. And as it did, hundreds upon thousands of ants, termites, and other insects rushed out of the cracks, crawling in all directions on the wall facing me. At first, I stood frozen in fear as the cracks in the wall split further. Suddenly, I came to my senses and leapt towards the door. Just as I exited the door, I heard a series of louder cracking sounds, along with the sounds of countless insects spilling onto the ground of the cabin, a sound similar to a large sack of seeds spilling onto the floor. I was delirious and I ran several feet away from the cabin front door. My stomach felt sick as I watched thousands of insects crawl out of the front door exiting the cabin. Then, I felt something crawling on my feet and looked down. There were ants crawling all up my legs. Hundreds of them. They seemed to be everywhere on the ground outside. I hopped and skipped around and tried my best to shake them off. When it seemed like I shook most of them off, I found that I'd landed right next to the neighbor's front porch. I looked down and saw there was also a thick ant trail leading up to their place. I saw some lights on, so I thought they might be home. I knocked on their door, but no response. So I peered through their window and, wow, was their place messy. There was so much food and trash, scattered all over the counter, tabletops, and floor. I looked some more and saw something on the floor surrounded by trash. It was a lake covered in ants. Then, I saw something dark on the floor near the middle of the room. It was the silhouette of another person, completely covered in ants. 
Neither of the bodies were moving. I stepped back from the window, feeling dizzy, and then I felt something crawling on my neck. It was more ants. I could feel more of them crawling all over me. So I jumped around some more, dusting and shaking them off, and ran as fast as I could to my truck to get the hell out of there. So now I'm driving to the police station because I couldn't get any phone reception near the cabin. I'm still in shock. Every time I feel something crawling on me or any sort of tickle, I keep thinking those damn killer ants are on me. Wait a second. Shit! There's ants coming from the back of the truck. Shit! I'd better go check out the trunk. which can be a bit uncomfortable. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm usually floating, so ants can't even reach my butt sack. I got you. Got you real good. Got you real good. Well, that does it for this episode. We'll see you next time, my fellow ghouls.